G'day mates, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about console competitive, and I know this is a topic that normally creates a whole bunch of drama, gets people really annoyed, and just usually doesn't go anywhere, but I just spent all morning watching round one and round two of the console FNCS or the console champions cup for EU and NA East, and I wanted to give my thoughts on competitive and a lot of the topics that I saw keep coming up in my chat. One of the most common ones being PC players shouldn't be allowed to play in this tournament. Despite the fact they're playing on console, if you're predominantly a PC pro you shouldn't be allowed to come back and play this tournament on console i want to address that talk about my thoughts on it i want to talk about what i think could be done to save competitive fortnite or just make it a lot better in the future for console and just my general thoughts on console as well like i haven't spent a lot of time watching console competitive i've watched one or two tournaments in the past but every time i do it blows my mind some of the stuff that you guys still have to put up with shadows having all the effects on high the audio like there's just so many things that I have to wonder why they haven't been improved for Fortnite and whether you could ever really be competitive on console while that still exists. So today's video is going to be an interesting one. I also want to cover some of the results from the tournament today, who placed, who didn't place and all that in between because it was really fun to watch. It was really exciting and I think it's only fair a whole bunch of you guys who watch my videos are on console. I'd like to bring that to my YouTube channel as well as my streams. All right, let's kick off with the big discussion topic. Should PC pros be allowed to come back and play on console for these tournaments? Is it fair? And if it's not fair, what can Epic actually do about it? So both sides of this topic, I understand in a sense. I understand why console players would be annoyed that PC pros who have their own tournaments, have a lot of their own tournaments, have access to a PC, shouldn't be coming and playing on a console and then taking money from the console com community from the only tournament they have. But you got to look at that on the flip side pc players or pc players are playing on console for this tournament they're playing on the same hardware they might have next gen consoles but a lot of console players also have next gen consoles so they're on equal footing so you can't really call them pc players when they're playing on a console but i get the frustration my take on it is the fact that i think there's nothing wrong with pc players or predominantly pc pros who have a console playing in a tournament for console and i have a few reasons for this firstly i think it legitimizes and makes it more impressive when a more known console team wins or does well over these PC pros. It gives it more validity. It gives it more respect because they're versing the best players in the world on that platform. It's not like you're barring the players who have gone on to do great things on PC saying, no, 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 you're not allowed to play on console. It's only for us. Because I genuinely think some of these guys who play predominantly on console or don't own a PC really are solid players. We saw that last uh, FNCS or last console champions cup in Middle East. There was a Middle East team who have never played on PC who absolutely dominated on console and beat all the PC pros coming back to console. I think it can be done. And then when all the PC players are allowed to play, it gives it more legitimacy. You think it's more impressive. You're like, look, they won. Like they legitimately won rather than winning this kind of like handicapped secondary tournament. But at the same time, I fully get why console players are upset when they spend a lot of money on V-Bucks. They grind really hard on console. They can't afford a PC. PC, they only have one tournament a season and majority of the prize money goes to PC players. I get both sides of it. So I don't think it's fair to hate on players who own a PC playing in console for this. It's their job. They want to make earnings. If they can beat players on a console, I think that's fair. Hats off to them. They deserve it. But I do think Epic could be doing more to make sure the money goes towards the console community. And I talk about this purely not from a competitive standpoint. I talk about it from more of like a longevity of the game and business standpoint. I think for a tournament to be truly competitive as long as everyone's on the same platform they won it's more competitive you should let them play but i get the fact that console players who are grinding the game might be getting demotivated they might not feel like epic cares about them and they might quit the game which is going to be unhealthy for the long term of the game so i have some ideas and some thoughts that i think could improve the console scene and give the game a console scene without just saying or oh, pc players you're not allowed to come back to console you're not allowed any of this money because i think if anything that damages the console scene because you're giving it less respect than it deserves you're saying that that they need to be handicapped just to win. I don't think that's true. 
Remember, I was one of the original people who pushed pretty hard for console FNCS. If you go back through my old YouTube videos, I was saying I believe console does deserve their own FNCS on at the same time as PC FNCS to make sure the prize money is going to console. So I don't want to hear this, oh, you're just switching up. You're just saying this. I have thought this for a really long time. I, my system for a console competitive community would be a console FNCS that happens at the same time as PC FNCS, and it's like a 25% prize pool, maybe 30 of what the uh, PC prize pool is. And I think the prize money should be spread way more thin. I've talked about this a lot. What motivates a lot of these PC pros to come back to console or even buy a console is the fact that the prize pool is very top end heavy. It's going to like the top five teams predominantly, especially with first place getting so much money. I think you could still have a really good competitive scene, really good tournaments if you spread that money more thin. So it went to more players who are actually on console. And if the prize prize money was spread more thin, it would reward those on PC to stay on the PC track to play the PC tournament to get the bigger prize pool. Also, obviously, in my opinion, the point of a console, uh, tournaments or console competitive in general is hopefully if you make enough money to get a PC to go on to do phenomenal things in PC like we've seen so many console players do. I mean, at the moment, I would argue that TK, Nut, Peterbot, those players are doing phenomenal things on the PC track. I'd like to see more console players get the money from console tournaments to then go to a PC. So it wouldn't just be like getting a bunch of money on console and then staying on console like we saw a bunch of pros do because the prize money was equal. Why would I switch off console when it's easier money? But if you had the players getting money and going to PC, representing the console community really well, and then other console players wanting to do that with a more spread uh, prize money, that'd be fantastic. I feel like on console, you don't need to make $50,000. I think a top end prize pool of a few thousand and spreading it down. So if you do well in a few console cups, you buy a PC and then you get a shot at those big, big prize pools. I think that would be far healthier. I think a lot of console players just want a chance to play in a tournament or play competitive against only other console players. And for that reason, I don't think they mind too much the PC players coming and playing. I know that this isn't the, the whole console community that doesn't want PC players or pros playing on their tournaments. I just think there needs to be more frequent tournaments. There needs to be a weekly cash cup, even if it's got a very small or no prize pool, so console players can just gauge their own competitive skill against other console players. I don't see why that that's not a thing. If you think you're too good to play in a, a tournament with very low prize pool or no prize pool, then don't. But it should be there for other console players to gauge their skill. I don't know if Epic's worried about the numbers and the queue times. Maybe they think they need to have all of console and PC against each other in the one cash cup rather than splitting them up like they used to. But I think splitting them up would be fantastic. I've had that many people in the console community, whenever I talk about this, just say, look, I don't even want a prize pool. I'm probably not even going to come top 500 100, but I just want to see myself getting better against other players on console and not have to worry about the fact that the people I'm versing are just on far superior hardware. I also think, unfortunately, now with next generation console being so superior to old generation, that causes a bunch of issues within console tournaments as well, but you can't split it that far. You can't have old gen tournament, new gen tournament, PC tournament. I think at a certain point, you just have to accept that if you're on old gen and you're versing new gen, yes, you're at a disadvantage, but do the best you can to maybe try to get your hands on a new gen console. I know they're incredibly hard to get, and I feel bad saying that, but at a certain point, that logic does have to stop where you can't just keep catering competitive to, you know, lesser and lesser hardware and capping everyone. I think having both generations of console versing each other is crucial. And hopefully in the future, the, the availability of next gen consoles goes up. And I hope the price stays at a pretty affordable point. So more people can get their hands on them. But from watching today, man, next gen really is on another level. I didn't realize how much uh, better next gen was. I think one of the main issues a lot of people are having now, especially with pros coming back, and playing in these console tournaments who play predominantly on PC is the fact that the next-gen consoles have way, way less input delay for mouse and keyboard. Back during the original, like, actual console FNCSs, the pros you saw, you know, playing on console over PC despite having PCs was usually controller players. But with the new-gen consoles, there was a lot of players doing really well last week and, uh, sorry, last uh, console Champions Cup and this Champion Console Cup on mouse and keyboard. I was watching 
players like Benji Fishy and yeah, looked a little bit worse, but man, they clearly were holding their own. I know Ronaldo made a tweet yesterday talking about how it felt really weird with the input delay and, you know, having less frame rate. So it's not obviously as good, but it's way better than what it used to be. So I think that's what's reignited this debate about pe people who own a PC playing on console because plugging a mouse and keyboard into a PS5 or an Xbox One, uh, sorry, Xbox S or Xbox S is just so much better than what it used to be, which is causing a lot of issues as well. But I genuinely think that old gen and new gen are always going to have to verse each other. And if you're on old gen, it is a bit unfortunate because man, the new gen, the frame rate they were holding end game was pretty consistently around about a hundred in like active storm surge lobbies. Like today I was watching, they were stacked, stacked lobbies. And if you're on old gen, I was watching MLG J rated. He was in an active storm surge lobby with like 40 rotating. He was getting like 30 to 40 FPS. Like that is tough. If you can get your hands on a new gen console, it's obviously very, very worth it. I know not everyone can, but I don't think you can go all the way down the route of then ha letting old gen have their own tournament. At a certain point, you just have to accept that unfortunately you're on the old hardware and you need to try to get your hands on something new as much as that sucks. I also know when I talk about these topics, I'm not speaking for the whole console community. I even made a tweet. It is a vocal minority. There's just a few people in the console scene that are very loud, that get very upset very quickly, that give the rest of you guys a bad name and make you look worse when it comes to like the PC pros. I think overall the console community at its core does have a really strong community that, that kind of has a bond over the fact of if a console player beats a PC player, it's even more impressive and everyone kind of celebrates that a bit more. So I like seeing console versus PC in certain tournaments, but as PCs just improve more and more, they are always just going to be leaps and bounds ahead of consoles. You've now got the 30 series cards. If you're on a 3080 or a 3090 with a solid CPU, you're pulling like consistent 200 plus frames end game in stacked end games with no input delay. Like it is a big advantage overall. But again, I know I'm not speaking for everyone in the console community. I don't want to pretend that I am. A lot of you guys probably have no problem with pros who own a PC coming back and playing console. If anything, like me, you love it when a console player then beats them because it's even more celebrated. I get that, but I saw a lot of people talking about this and a lot of people asking my opinion. So I just wanted to make sure I covered in a video as well. Now, let's have a discussion about just what you console guys are putting up with at this point. I couldn't believe it. I have never played console Fortnite, really. I've played it a few times here and there. I probably played less than 20, 30 games total. And that was like a year and a half, two years ago. And every time I watch console streams, I can't believe what you guys still deal with. Shadows are insane. The black superhero skin with these shadows would have been literally straight up cheating. I didn't think anything would be as bad as the Rose skin in Warzone. I play that game and I literally just can't see it sometimes. It's just super, super disgusting. But that's the same thing in Fortnite. You guys go into a box, you've got walls breaking, you've got fire, you've got a dark shadow, you've got a sun setting in the corner. There's a guy hooking through your box with a P90. You've then got another ball of fire on the other side. The player next to you is chug cannoning. You can't hear any of it. It is actually insane to me. Like I, I made a tweet and again, I think a lot of people in the comments said the same thing. It looks like Sony and Microsoft probably have an agreement with Fortnite that the console has to stay on high resolution, high textures, high shadows to make the game look better because that's the way they want it to look. They don't want one platform to look way worse than the other. And I don't think Sony or Microsoft's gonna watch my video and I don't think my opinion's gonna change their mind. But if you were a console owner and you allowed or had the ability to turn on performance mode and shadows off on console, the amount of people that would buy that console would be insane, like genuinely insane. Because again, you've got the hardware that is obviously, you know, inferior. It's worse than a PC. It, it, you know, like next gen consoles are better than a lot of the people on PC, but they don't get the same frames because you don't have the same customization and abilities to change things. Shadows and high res textures just makes such a difference when it comes to a PC. Again, I'm not going to test it on my PC because obviously my PC is insanely overkill anyway. But if you had PC with similar specs to a new gen console and you turned on high res and shadows, I, I reckon you'd probably be getting half the frames. 
literally half the frames. If you guys at, were able to turn off shadows and put on performance mode, I almost have no doubt that next gen consoles would run 140 frames end game solid, never dropping at all. Even upwards of 200 frames. Again, if you look at the processors and the, and the graphics card comparisons in consoles, a lot of people liken the graphics card to like a 2080. I know people who are playing competitive on like 1660s and 1050s who are getting more frames than next gen console. The ability is there to get a really good gaming performance, but for whatever reason, you guys can't change those settings. I, I know there's nothing you guys can really do about it. So I'm sorry I'm bringing this up. It's probably just gonna make you feel worse if anything, but it just makes my respect for console players who place and do well that much higher because I know I'm old. I'm not gonna try and say I'm an insane pro player, but if I was on console trying to find people in a box fight or an end game would be impossible. Couple that with the fact that you guys can't hear anything. I've never seen so many players use visual audio and I was so confused as to why until I watched the stream more and more and just realized how much worse audio is on console. Like if you guys have uh, 3D headphones on, turn that off. Definitely turn that off. The amount of console players that I have realized that think that 3D headphones is better, it is not. 100% of PC pros, or at least 99% everyone that I know has 3D headphones off. Yes, you can hear directional audio better, but you lose, the distance doesn't matter. There's players six boxes over in attack fight, and it sounds like they're shooting you in the back of the head. You need to turn that off. It will help you massively. As far as the actual visual audio goes, we had this discussion today. Not a lot of people on console I've no, I know have realized that when you turn visual audio on, it actually changes the audio settings. You're not just getting the same audio, but then also the benefit of seeing the visual audio. It makes the audio worse itself. Instead of coming in from binaurally, which means on multiple channels, so you can get directional audio, it comes in on a single channel. So you lose all directional audio. So yes, sometimes early and mid game visual sounds can help. You see when someone's medding, you see where someone's shooting, but at the same time, when it's end game and then your whole screen is just full of everything on top of what I just talked about with the guy hooking in your box and the chug cannon, the fire and the sunset, you can't see anything and your audio is now worse. So I would highly recommend getting used to visual audio off. But again, I don't play on console too much. I know even with visual audio off, your guys audio is still really, really bad. I don't get the reason for that. I don't think processing audio is that much more intensive on parts. I don't get why a PC is just going to render and get audio so much better than a console. But again, I have no idea how you guys track here or see anything. As for the actual quality of the games and the tournament in general, I know it's only a round one, so this was technically where you're gonna watch the worst players. It still looked really good. There was good active Storm Surge end games. A lot of the teams that I watched knew how to play the game properly, not just the PC pros that switched the console. In my viewing parties, I was doing about half-half. I had a bunch of the big streamers, obviously, and I had a lot of smaller guys from my community, just other people that got recommended to me and that you guys were responding to my tweets and stuff. And honestly, I was pretty impressed. There were some people that I've never watched or never heard of before that were just pure console players that I watched play height and position themselves and communicate and play end games better than a lot of the pros that I watch. So I know the console community doesn't get too much prize pool. I know they don't get fostered too well. And I'm not going to try and say as a whole is better than the PC community. But honestly, the games today were fun to watch. Like you did, I'm not just watching pubs and people run around like idiots and we're just giving them prize money for no reason. Clearly these console guys follow competitive and know how to play. I was really impressed with a lot of the teams I watched today. As for the results of the tournament, it's what you'd probably expect. We did see a lot of PC pros at the top as well. I mean, if you go through the EU leaderboard, obviously I'm already noticing Hi Chris. I'm noticing Anas and Jenks. Um, again, I'm noticing Diablo. I'm noticing quite a lot of players, but again, there's quite a few in there that I know are console. We've got Vino, Wolfies playing together as well. We have Clement, Deceptos, and Leo. There's quite a few. I get that. And I'm sure in the finals, there probably will be quite a few as well. NA East and EU from the last console champions cup there were a lot. If you look at NA, it was Nani, Squish, and Pump that just absolutely popped off 309 point first place. That's almost 100 points over the first place on EU at 228. And if you look at their match history, it's easy to see why. They had an average ELIM across nine games of 18.67. Some of their games was a 22 a limb seventh, a 28 a limb first, a 16 a limb first, a 19 a limb second, a 36 a limb second, a 21 a limb second, and a 23 a limb second. 
I don't even know. I mean, obviously, absolutely dominating. We saw Ages, Nut, and Jays in second. We saw Drops, uh, we dro Drops, TK, and Spexy again, Alejandro. I love that because those are three X console gang representing. Gone to PC, doing phenomenal things. I've been talking about how Spexy at the moment is popping off. TK is popping off. They go back to console and they're still dominating. For that reason, that is why I like to see the guys play in these kind of tournaments. But overall, it was fantastic. It's only round one, so I'm not going to run the leaderboard heaps. I'm not going to talk about, you know, oh, this guy did crazy and that guy. It's round one. Again, we'll save that for round four, which I will be doing. If you guys don't know, I'm going to be doing viewing parties tomorrow or today by the time you watch this video for round three EU. Round two just starts way too early for me. Round three EU, I'll be watching round two and three NA East. And then the next day, I'll be hopefully watching round four EU, round four NA East and round four NA West doing replay mode so I can follow all the big names. Because it's opens right now, I've been watching stream perspectives, which honestly has been really fun to find some small underrated streamers and give them a platform to kind of, you know, have their moment on. It's been really, really fun. Alright guys, that does it for another video. I know this is one you're going to want to give your thoughts on, so let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on anything I talked about today. I touched on some pretty big topics. I know people are going to get mad. Some people aren't going to like my opinion, but I hope we can keep it relatively, you know, civil and have an actual discussion about this. If you liked today's video, please suck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.